tracker footage and use that background thing, and then we add an explosion. Um, we're using stock footage from Action Essentials. And what we want to do is add multiple explosions and sort of mix them together. Because one of the big sort of giveaways for um, something being a visual effect is that um, you can recognize the stock footage. Um, so what we're doing is basically taking multiple explosions and we're masking them and feathering the edges of the masks so that they blend together, um, right? And so that they go in the direction we want them to. And so that way we have more control over the explosion. We can sort of customize them a bit better. We're putting them all into add mode so they all blend together nicely. And we're cutting off the little ground pieces that um, sort of give it away as a stock footage element. Um, so more explosions. We're going to have the explosion cover up that guy uh, just because we don't really know what to do with him. We can't, obviously, we can't make him go flying because that would be too difficult. So if we just have it sort of eat him, then that's good. We're going to add some debris. We're going to add some cement debris. What we're going to do with this is because it starts at a big block, we're going to want to push it back a bit and have it start already broken. So we're going to resize it and we're going to kind of break it and then we're going to speed it up so that it matches the speed of the explosion because most of these elements are going to be in slow motion and we don't want that. That looks ridiculous and it needs to match the scene. And then we color correct it so that it matches the sort of haze in the background so it's not super crisp color in the background because um, that's another giveaway thing for stock footage is that, or compositing in general is that the lines will either be too crisp or too faded in comparison to the background that they're comped onto. Um, we're adding more explosions so it really covers that guy. And the nice thing about an explosion is it sort of tends to eat stuff because it's fire. And so if, because a lot of these elements have, um, end with them hitting the ground, you can just sort of have the fire eat it up so you don't have that giveaway. Um, we're going to add some glass to the background because there's windows in the background. We're going to add some glass debris, speed that up. Same thing as always, add mode. Um, that just adds a little bit more to the scene. Uh huh. We're adding some falling debris, some falling glass. We're going to color correct the explosion um, so that it pops a bit more. Add more debris because you can never have enough debris. We're going to add some more dirt kind of debris because we have enough cement. We need sort of like bits. We need wood bits. We need sort of dust. We need other stuff. Real explosions are messy. That's another giveaway of fake explosions that they're super clean and fiery. And in reality, explosions are dust and dirt, and because they're exploding things, and really you rarely actually see flames. But in this case, we want it to look cool, so we're going to see flames. We're going to fix the mask on that pole. Um, well, logically, you should want to avoid having stuff in the foreground if you know you can mask it out properly. It actually can sell the scene a little bit better because stuff gets integrated and it doesn't look like it's just overlaid over top. So if you can have something that you mask out and you know that you have the ability to mask it out, go for it because it'll make the scene look a lot more realistic. We're gonna rotoscope that car and kind of have the car get eaten by the explosion as it goes along. Um, nice thing about feathering is that, yeah, because explosions aren't like super solid. You don't really have to have perfect rotoscoping for this. And we're gonna add flares over this and that should um, sort of fix any problems that we have. Um, yeah, so we're just going to go frame by frame. We're going to fix that rotus, fix that mask so that the car kind of goes into the explosion a little bit and the explosion overlaps with the car. Um, now we're going to add dust waves. These are important. As I said, explosions are dirty. They're not super clean. We're going to add just a bunch of these. And since we can add them in layers, this will add sort of a sense of depth to the explosion because we can have some overlap certain things and some not overlap certain things. So right, so we have like this dust wave in the front that's overlapping the pole, and we can also have dust waves in the back that don't overlap the pole. And so in that way, it'll look like it's a continuous, one continuous dust wave. Um, and because it's dust, you can just mask it and feather out the bottom so that you don't have that sharp line and it won't look weird because it kind of all just blends together. So this is starting to look pretty good. Um, add more dust. This one's a bit more rolly. Um, dust is good. Dust integrates everything. Um, all of this, by the way, is being parented to that motion track, so um, it'll all follow the camera movement. And having natural camera movement does sell stuff, so it's actually usually better than a lockdown shot if you know you can track it. Um, <clears throat> it's like the masking thing. We're going to add a little bit more debris to that edge because we didn't really have any over there, so it sort of looks like the explosion is blowing stuff out. Um, and yeah, the, the trick here for realism is to 
just keep all the motion consistent. So everything's moving at the same speed, everything's moving in the same direction, and it all looks like it's one giant fireball rather than a bunch of different elements. Um, we're going to kind of rotoscope that guy so that it eats him instead of just going over on top of him and it looks, because you can see that part of the explosion is behind him. Um, so it explodes behind him and sort of consumes him. Um, add some dust. We need some dirt. We already have dust. Put it in different blending modes, figure it out. You know, the trick here is you just play with stuff. There's no, there's no, there's no one good way to do it. You just have to kind of play around. Uh huh. So you're basically just going to scrub through this a bunch of times. You're going to add stuff. You're going to see what looks good. You're going to add color correction to different elements. Um, and the motion is the thing that people most often overlook. We're going to add some environmental light because it's an explosion and it's bright and that immediately makes everything just look better. Look at that. Look how much nicer that looks. Um, so now it looks hot and it looks fiery. We're going to add some lens flares. Um, lens flares in Apple Motion are super annoying, but you can make them work. We're not going to parent those to the motion track. We're just going to hand track them because they're bright and they're simple and we don't need to do that. But that makes the explosion look a lot better. Um, we're just going to keep adjusting the time and the sort of, yeah, the timing of all this until we get something that looks good. Copy that. Lens flare. And the nice thing about the lens flares too is they sort of cover up any bad edges that you'll have. And realistically, you wouldn't be able to see that much detail in an explosion filming it or with your eyeballs because it's extremely bright. And so this actually, first of all, covers up mistakes and second of all, adds a level of realism to it. We're going to add a laser because we need a source for our explosion. And this scene is part of an alien attack. Um, and so we're going to make it a blue laser because everybody loves blue lasers and just kind of recolor it, adjust the feather, get it to look natural, kind of fade out. We're going to bring in some smoke, and so basically the laser is going to disappear into a puff of smoke the same way the ones in the Avengers did. This is all just the same smoke element over and over again and just rotated, and yeah, because it's smoke, it all just blends together, and so you can see that looks pretty good. Um, we're going to add some lens flares to the laser to get it to kind of integrate and we're going to fade those out as the laser goes away. Um, so instead of, it's it's sort of a variation on just the classic lightsaber laser or neon light laser because it affects the environment more by leaving behind smoke. And so just little things like that that integrate your stuff into the scene will make your scene a lot better. And we're going to export this.